All right, guys, Saturday afternoon. Welcome back to the Tush Mahal. Tush coming at you. A little bit of a grim day outside today. Kind of gray. Looks like it's going to rain. It was raining. Still some puddles on the ground over there. So, not too much going on outside today. So, let's do a little bit of work inside the garage. So, as I'd mentioned in yesterday's video, we're going to start working on... Uh, Doing some final checks and torque checks on fasteners, uh, doing up brake line unions, that kind of thing. Um, we do have this uh, universal to install on the steering shaft that we think we'll do today. I actually want to go back and I want to actually make sure I have the correct torque on the crank uh, bolt. I don't remember torquing that, so we're going to take the rad off um, and we're going to make sure we've got, I think it's 100 foot pound torques on that crank, uh, torque on that crank bolt. So we'll go back and we'll do that, uh, and we'll work our way sort towards the back of the car as we do our checks along the way. So that's it for today, really. Um, there is a drive plan for tomorrow, believe it or not, for uh, Sunday morning at 9.30. So I'm hoping the weather will be improving. I haven't had a car out this year, so tomorrow looks like the opportunity to do so. So I was thinking about maybe taking the 1960 TR3A out for a drive tomorrow with a bunch of guys. But we'll see how that goes. Um, I obviously have to go up and storage, up to storage, and get it. Whether that's today or tomorrow, uh, that's another uh, story. But we'll uh, see what we can do to make it to the drive tomorrow. All right, the uh, crank bolt is now uh, torqued to 92 foot-pounds. It's between 90 and 100 in the manual. Incidentally, I couldn't find it in the Bentley manual. I had to resort to looking it up in the Haynes manual. And like I said, the Haynes refers to that torque as being 90 to 100 pounds. So it's torqued. So we can put that back on. That literally took me five minutes to take that stuff off. We're now working on that uh, universal joint for the steering uh, rack. And I see that this gent, previous owner, has put a jumper lead in across the uh, two terminals. Because the stock rack on the TR6 has a bolt on top of the rack where the horn grounds to. Uh, it's actually, I think you can grease the rack on the stock rack underneath that bolt. Well, this aftermarket rack that I've got uh, does not have that uh, capability. So I believe what this guy has done is just run a jumper between the uh, universal and then uh, use that as a ground to the pinion versus actually attaching anything to the top bolt on the stock rack. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, new universal here, old one there, the old pinch bolt. So we're going to clean those up. We'll make another jumper to put it on there, and uh, we'll get it back on the car. Well, I appreciate the fact that you can get things quickly from Amazon. It's one thing they really need to work on, and that's their packaging. Let me explain. Let me get this open. It's a pretty big box. Pretty empty box. All for that. Can you believe that? Could you not just put this in like an envelope? Like a, a bubble wrap uh, envelope? As opposed to that? Almost as big as my toolbox. Alright, at least I got what I was looking for. This is my uh, fan mounting kit. Alright guys, we have the radiator and the supports back installed after torquing up that um, crank bolt. Um, and putting the fan back on obviously. Um, we did put the e-fan on the front. This is actually a 16 inch spal fan. It is a pusher fan. Uh, I measured about 16, just a little bit of over 16 inches high. It's about 15 and 3 quarter inches wide. So it fits perfectly on the front of this rad. <clears throat> I think the push is about um, between 12 and 1300 or between 1100 and 1300 CFM. So it should do, uh, do the trick. So, that's it for that. I guess we'll move on to something else. And just in case you want to hear how loud this is, here we go. That took some serious air through the rad. That's awesome. Boy, you should feel it. Alright, I'm happy with that. Let's move on. Alright guys, take a last look at the uh, 
Vulcan Drifter 800, the 1999. It is on its way to a new home, unfortunately. But we're going to move up to uh, bigger and better things. So this spike was purchased as a bit of a stepping stone. Some of you right remember. And uh, I've enjoyed working on it, uh, riding it for sure. So I've got all the uh, parts ready to go with the bike over here. The gent's supposed to arrive in the next uh, hour or so. So we've got her all shined up for one last time. And uh, I'm going to be sad to see it go. But when one door closes, another one opens, they say. So we'll see what's next. All right, guys, good morning. Uh, Sunday, September the uh, 6th, I believe. Could be wrong. Anyway, Labor Day weekend, 2020. Uh, finally got our parts uh, box in from uh, British Parts Northwest. Um, so these are the engine bits I need for the cylinder head, and I believe my high torque, high torque starter should be in here as well. So let's, uh, let's get this unboxed and uh, have a look and see if this will help us continue on with our... Uh, project and there's a little bit more I need to uh, discuss along the way after we get this stuff unpacked. I think it took about uh, a week and a half, two weeks for this stuff to get to me. So unfortunately I haven't done much on the car. Um, you see the preceding video to this. Uh, I sold my Kawasaki Drifter, Indian Drifter yesterday, so a little bit of a hole in the garage. It's not unusual. It's unusual for uh, my neighbors to see something leaving this place versus uh, coming to this place. So they were all in shock, I think, yesterday. Anyway, so here we go. So uh, new fan belt. Obviously, there's some non-cylinder head stuff in here as well. Uh, new um, overflow bottle uh, pipe because the other one gets pretty yellow and ugly looking so if you're going to go new everything else you may as well get uh, a new overflow uh, bottle hose right? It's only money. I always like when they uh, give you candy. So, thank you very much uh, British Parts Northwest. We got some high chews. Alright so these are valves, so intake valves, and I'm assuming they're, I don't know if these are just all intake, 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 yeah, so all the intake valves here, okay, that's good, hopefully there's six in there and not five, and we got a bulk pack here, okay, so I see exhaust valves in here. So exhaust valves, stainless, okay. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're good. I'm kidding. Six. Uh, okay, so uh, hardened seats. Okay. A couple hardened seats there. I'll get to that. Hardened seats. So I've got uh, hardened seats for both the exhaust and the intake. Although I think I mentioned in a previous video that they may not uh, want to do the intake. Um, but we'll see. I'll leave it up to the machine shop. I figured I'd get them just in case. So hardened seats. Um, what is this guy? Oh, this is a um, new oil pressure switch. I just got as a backup. Um, just for the one that's on the car. I'm going to leave the one that's on the car, but it's always good to have a backup switch. Sometimes they, they leak, so I'll throw this in the, uh, in the boot and just carry it along as a spare. Uh, highly recommend something to shut your battery off. So a uh, battery, this is just a simple uh, uh, shut off for the negative uh, terminal on the uh, battery. Got them on all my cars. They work really good, especially if you uh, store your cars for exp extended periods of time. Uh, basically, I, just, I turn this off every time I drive the car, so uh, even if I park it and plan on driving it the next day, I'll always turn this off. It can be a little bit of a theft deterrent as well, if somebody's trying to hotwire the car and they're not under the bonnet. But anyway, uh, valve springs, so inner valve springs, and uh, 
outer valve springs. So a set of those. And the inners don't look very substantial, that's for sure. So these are supposed to be a um, high performance spring uh, to go with my uh, 150 uh, horsepower cam. So uh, we'll see. Anyway, so a new spring set. What else did we get here? Uh, I figured I'd just get new uh, manifold, uh, a new manifold stud and bolt kit and replace all those out. So nice brass, new brass nuts, uh, new studs, etc. So uh, not really a requirement, but I uh, figured while I'm in there, I may as well do it. What else we got here? Uh, made in Mexico. Oh, this is a um, bracket for, it's a chrome bracket for the coil. So it's something to dress the engine up a little bit. Again, not required, just something that I figured I'd buy while I was in there. I actually purchased this when I couldn't find my coil initially, so that's why I also have another coil. And it's not a bad idea to have a spare coil anyway, so a uh, new coil as well. So just a regular Lucas coil. It's not a sport coil, it's just a regular, regular old Lucas coil. So this will do the trick. Nothing too uh, fancy about it. So silver case. Yeah, it actually comes with a bracket on it too. So that chrome bracket is a little uh, over the top. There's nothing wrong with the bracket that comes with it. So that looks good. I didn't actually realize that it come with the bracket. So that's kind of a, a bonus feature. And then we've got. What's in this box? Oh, this is my high torque starter. High torque starter. I can't talk today. So uh, because of the uh, because of the change with the um, flywheel uh, on and crank on my 250, I've gone with the TR6 uh, gear reduction starter. So hopefully this will be the ticket for the car. Probably have to do some measurements to make sure. All is good. So there is the high torque starter. So that looks good. So those five starters that I'll have for uh, sitting over there on the floor, I will again go back into storage and wait for another day. They really need to go to a flea market. So there's uh, there's everything I've got. So valves, springs, uh, hardened seats. I have the guides somewhere, although I've kind of misplaced those in the last uh, couple of weeks, but I'll have to do a bigger search for those. They're in a bin somewhere. So basically the plan now is to take the head up to the machine shop and have them take a look and give me some advice. Uh, I have a little chat before I get to that point, so let me turn you off and I'll restart you. All right, I go, might go on a little bit of a ramble here, but uh, bear with me. So there is the head surrounded by uh, all of its uh, old components that I stripped off of the car. Um, and that's getting ready to go up to the machine shop, as I would indicated. Now, um, prior to going to the shop, I was trying to do some measurements of the head thickness, because I was thinking of getting the head skimmed to get to an optimum um, compression ratio. And the optimum compression ratio that guys are aiming for that have any sort of... Uh, um, performance uh, mods done to their engine is around 9.5 to 1. So uh, that's what I was hoping to achieve with this head uh, after I've after I'd taken it to the machine shop. Even something a little bit less than that, like 9.2 to 1, would be good, which would leave me a little bit of thickness left if I wanted to machine it, you know, somewhere down the road. But anyway, 9.5 to 1 would be the optimal um, compression ratio that you're looking for in a performance engine. Now. After measuring the head, and I measured it uh, with some calipers, and I had Alin measure it. Alin is much more exacting in his measurements than I am. Now, unfortunately, it looks like this head has already been skimmed several times in the life of the, um, the car. And it looks like, based on the uh, chart from Richard Good, if you go to Richard Good's site and look at his info pages, he's got a uh, CR chart there based on head thickness and of course you got to do the calculation with uh, bore and stroke and uh, combustion chamber size etc etc uh, head gasket thickness um, the, the whole ratio basically is in there the whole uh, the whole math calculation to get to your CR is is basically broken down into uh, head thickness and um, bore 
So it looks like um, I've got a 10.5 to 1 compression ratio already on this car, which is getting to the maximum limit of what you can actually run on the street with pump gas. So if those measurements are accurate, um, I might have a bit of a decision to make, especially if they need to flatten this head. I mean, if they need to skim it, obviously it's going to incre increase the <clears throat> compression ratio even more, which, make, which might make it unusable for the street. So I'm going to have to make a decision on whether to use this head or search for another head. So before I get too crazy about the whole thing, I'm going to take it to the machine shop and have, have them measure the head thickness for me and then we'll have to make some decisions. Now what exactly does that mean to me? Well, if I don't find a early cylinder head and I go with something like my 73 head that I have over here which is in pretty good shape, the only problem is yes the heads are interchangeable but things like the valves are different for example. Um, so the items I've just purchased for this TR250 head may not necessarily work for my 73 head. The gasket set, for example, is a totally different um, head gasket for the 73 head versus the earlier TR250, early TR6 head. So there are multiple things that I need to consider when I'm doing head swaps. Carburetors, um, I think the head uh, or the uh, intake port uh, spacing is different. So that's something I have, looked, have to look at. The exhaust ports I'd have to look at as well. I do have a header that I uh, was going to run on this car. And if I go to a, a different head, I'm not sure if the exhaust ports uh, match up. It's something, that, again, I have to do more research on. But it's something to be aware of. So, of course, I've got a new header uh, in the house ready to go for this head in particular that it were, you know, came off the 250 and all of the accompanying parts to go with this car. But if I have to swap a head out, and I can't find an earlier head to go with, and I go with a later head, then that means some of the parts that I've ordered are not necessarily interchangeable. So, could be back to the drawing board. Again, I'm not going to get too wrapped up in all of this until I take this to the, head, uh, to the machine shop and get the head measured. Um, if it's flat and I'm at 10.5 to 1 compression, that's what was obviously running on the car when I bought it. If the head is flat and doesn't need to be skimmed, then I might just say to heck with it and we'll go with the 10.5 to 1 and we'll see how we can do on the street with that. Anyway, lots of things to consider and I just wanted to mention that. So yeah, it's turning into a bit of a, uh, bit of a story here with the uh, cylinder head. That's how you slow a project down.